yeah, so back with another episode of the podcast. Um, another local guest. We've got Gemma Bradley on today. How you doing? Hello. Good I'm to good. see you. Yeah, you too. What have you been up to today? I've been working. Um, a lot of listening to music, a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot mm. of good Zoom meeting, a <laughs> um, lot of like social media assets, getting stuff like that ready for yeah. ATL and all that. So. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have anybody that you worked with that you hadn't met during lockdown? Like there's people I hadn't met that I worked with and I had no idea what height they were. Like, and then you meet <laughs> them and then they're like either really tall or way more muscly than you thought they were gonna be. And they're just totally different. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think, um, so when I started with like Radio One, I was being produced over Zoom. And sometimes I still am produced over Zoom, but I'd never met my producer and assistant producer originally. So it might have been like six months, six or seven months into the job is when I was over in London. We had a little meetup and then we were like, oh, I wonder what height everyone's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then some people were shorter than I thought. Some people were taller than I thought as well. So, um, yeah, it was an interesting one. I also forget that I haven't met people in real life. When you get to know them over Zoom, you see them in real life and you forget that, oh, actually, I don't, don't actually yeah, know you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. What are some of the other like magic bits of radio that maybe that you could tell us about that like no one knows on the outside but then when you're there like I remember I did this thing I used to do like a bit of acting when I was younger and to make the sound of like their voice getting quieter they actually had this room where you like ran round in a circle like away from it and you think you could just do that with technology now but I had to like run around this big thing <laughs> like do you have it obviously not like that when you're we producing radio but something yeah 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 but like what sort of stuff sort of blew your mind when you started when you started oh um oh, that's a, that's kind of a tough question I think um it's one of those things I always think people when they're on air they sound so chill like calm and collected they know what they're doing and I know from my my own point of view there's times where I'm like yeah this nice track blah 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 and I'm like is a track there do we have the session blah blah, blah. <laughs> you know so um I think you know I guess we put on that we're fine and we don't want you know the listeners to know we're in a panic if we are um but that's something I definitely learned because I just assumed everyone was you know chill all the time on the radio. how uh how long do you think it took for you to like feel completely comfortable doing it Oh, still not there. No. <laughs> um, I'm definitely better than I was at the beginning. I think it's one of those things. You always get that imposter syndrome with anything you kind of do. Um, and it took me a while to settle into it. Definitely a few months because when I started, I was brand new. Like I'd never done radio before or, you know, even hosted anything before. Um, so it was definitely interesting. So I'm still finding my way, I think. But, you know, now that I've been in the industry a couple of years, I feel definitely a lot more relaxed. Um and then I always laugh if people ask me for tips because I'm like, who am I <laughs> to give tips to you, honestly? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it's one of those things. Wherever you're at in your career, you're always trying to progress. So, yeah. Would you say that you feel more comfortable presenting or like when you're on stage playing your own music? I mean, I think, oh, I mean, both, both. Because I feel like for me, when, before I start presenting, I, um, talking to an audience live when I was playing I hated it with a passion right. I just really didn't like public speaking it really scared me and you couldn't have paid me to do it I would have been like right this is that was play a song like enjoy the song and then I'm like oh, these eyes looking at me <laughs> um so I think the presenting really helped me with that become comfortable with that and now when I am on stage I'll have a chat I'm probably not making any sense when I'm talking but at least I'm saying stuff and I don't feel that real nervous kind of chaotic energy that I had before so that's really helped me with that yeah. that's that's a real art form in itself isn't it I think the the concerts I've enjoyed the most are the ones where there's segues in between songs or it almost feels like it's a theatrical thing very naturally though you know I remember seeing uh, Thundercat I think it was like Glass and or something and just in between it just it just felt like he'd mapped out the whole thing in his head but it was just a casual conversation it was really really cool Mac DeMarco was also nuts at that yeah. as well he was good yeah I remember when we saw Mac DeMarco and he was just like started screaming in between songs yeah <laughs> I love that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were just like walking into the turn and it's like what have we just walked into this is so weird <laughs> who, who would be some of your inspirations or influences in terms of radio presenters out there that's a good one I think um people that I definitely look up to was I think number one Annie Mack mm. like absolute legend mm -hmm. um just the way she paces the way she talks you know it's really intriguing and sometimes I think people think it's just chatting on the radio but there's more to it like something I had to learn was where to talk from um 
you know, rather I don't want to make it sound really annoying, like like real nasally or too chesty. You want to find that right balance, which is something I learned. Um, but definitely Annie Mack, Greg James as well, because I think his personality really shines uh, when he talks on the radio. And um, yeah, those are my two kind of main ones. There's others I could probably get into, but I don't want to bore you. <laughs> no, like, I, think, I think for a lot of Irish people, even just like Annie Mack was such a familiar voice. Mm-hmm, and like, it's mm-hmm. I always thought it was so cool. I was younger, you know, hearing people like Annie Mack, Phil Taggart, just all these people that sound familiar when like there's so many other like English voices on the radio and it kind of, um, yeah, it's it's not too often you see people from here doing that, so it's, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, no, it definitely is. Um, it's something I knew when I went to school, it was never like, did you know you could be a radio presenter? Yeah. You get paid to talk, like, you know, I never knew that was an option. Otherwise, I maybe would have been interested in it when I was younger, but it was never put forward to me all I knew was the music scene and then academic subjects but you know it's one of those things I clearly didn't go down that route so <laughs> so how did you actually um get into the opportunity of Radio 1 yeah I mean it was an interesting one because I've been doing ATL um for just maybe just over a year or just under um and then um I just got reached out to um basically saying they were looking for people to dep on different radio shows and I think the year before they just launched the Christmas presenter show uh, uh, where people kind of covered the the other presenters that were off having the Christmas holidays love and life but given this opportunity to new up-and-coming presenters and I thought it was really cool I set myself a goal of right next year you'll be in it a year so that's what I wanted to do was do the Christmas presenter thing but luckily enough they reached out before that and we're like would you be interested in this send us in a demo I was like, grand? Yeah, of course. Of course I'll do that. Um, so I worked and worked and worked. Um, and it sounded horrible because I've been recording from home. We were in the height of lockdown. Yeah. I had a duvet and a clothes horse as a studio, which isn't <laughs> ideal. Um, so when I did get into the studio, I was just shouting into the mic, we got like, hello guys, <laughs> how's it going? And um, my producer was like, calm down, like just reel it back. Um, but we managed to piece together a really fun demo and then after that, I kind of got offered the job, which I mean, I think ev- everyone has different ways of coming into it. So um, it was a nice, a nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have like a, a moment when you were actually in the studio, like after lockdown, when you were like, oh, yeah, it's actually real now? 100 percent. Like, you know, it was it was interesting because we do a lot of the broadcasts from Radio Ulster, which is great. So what I actually loved about that was, you know, getting to have that environment where I was already kind of comfortable rather than having the daunting task of going straight into the Radio 1 studios, doing a show and be like, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So um, that was really nice. But I think the first day when I went in and like met the team to do like our first show over Zoom, obviously, um, I was like, this is happening. This is real. And then when it went out on Sunday, I I, like sat down and was like listening back to it. And I was like, this is amazing you know um so it was yeah it was just one of those surreal experiences do you um do you find it easy listening to yourself no not at all (laughs) at that time I was like oh my god this is great but I was like oh could have said that better um I think I've always had a problem listening to my voice I'm like oh gross is that what I actually sound like and actually I find sometimes um my laptop speaker I hope it's my laptop speaker but say if it records my voice it comes back really low so I'll listen to it back and I'm like, hello, I'm Gemma. And I'm like, is that my voice? <laughs> is that my voice? But it's not. It's just the speaker, I think. I hope. So. <laughs> I, I think it sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of hate it. But I edit all the videos that we do. So I end up having, it's when you listen to yourself, like repeat the same phrase about 10 mm. times in a row. And you're just like, I never want to do this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just made me conscious. And I'm, I try to do it all the time, but it makes me conscious of how quickly I speak. And like, you know, when you meet people, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I'm like, I, the old time I would watch these back, I don't watch them very frequently. I'm like, I am speaking like a machine gun. I need to like <laughs> slow down. What were some of the first things that you were taught when you were getting into radio? Like the important things for maybe enunciation or any of those things that, you know, maybe people take for granted. Yeah, I mean, a couple of the things were obviously tone. Mm-hmm. Um, you, like I said, you don't want to be too nasally because then it sounds like nye, 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 in your ear. Because you have to remember, somebody's listening with headphones on, even in the car. You want to be like the friend, or you don't want them to turn you off because they're like, oh, I cannot stand the tone of their yeah. voice. Um, so that was one thing. Um, also, pacing really important. 
um when i was learning i really like tried to listen to annie mack and how she paces because she is incredible at that and that's like such a talent and takes ages to learn um and another one is repeating words which i do sometimes and i always say um which is obviously it's just your brain thinking but when you listen to that back you're like oh sound that's not good yeah. uh, we had to ban a few words for a while i wasn't allowed to say the word mental and um what was another one? Oh, uh, or like i must have said like that's so exciting but it nearly didn't sound genuine it's just like my automatic response and then i was like next question <laughs> um but now I, I always take the time to make sure like when i'm doing interviews to really listen to the answers and at the end of the day it's a conversation isn't it so, yeah mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of like unconscious things that you do that you would never ever notice until you watch yourself back 100 percent, definitely like what what is it about radio that makes it such an important medium or why do you think it's so um appealing as a as a medium why would you not go for something else maybe writing or podcasting or something like that i think it really depends on what you enjoy like i like to write but it's not my favorite i i think i can speak better than i could write to be fair um and i just love like the connection you can get with the listeners um, and the bands as well because with the listeners you're that voice there you can be their friend and something what a lot of people said is that radio got them through lockdown because mm. every day they maybe listen to their favorite presenter favorite show and be like oh that's what's happening today because you were just stuck in the house you had nothing really else to do and i know for bands um i know for me anyway as an artist and a presenter i love being able to help bands get their music on the radio and like try and break them if i can because i just think there's so much talent here that we have and we need to shout about it yeah. and that's one of the reasons why i love that and yeah you can chat to people too you can't really chat to someone if you're writing um although podcasting is kind of similar to radio it's just maybe a bit more stripped back and because you can talk for a bit longer and it's not as like we've got the news at 11 we have to be on it this time <laughs> yeah. you know so it's kind of good that way yeah i mean do you think it's made it a lot easier now for you to find new music <laughs> yeah well i mean i would have been fine that anyway but definitely because obviously people are sending me their music now um i was actually doing some a and r sessions last week and uh i got sent this uh, track from a girl we were chatting and she's like oh by the way here's my song and i was like oh my gosh this is amazing i yeah. have to play it on the show so that's what i did but i probably wouldn't have heard that unless she hadn't sent that to me because I, I didn't know who she was before so um but now, now i know who she is yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there's something about um how it's easier or more accessible nowadays to make higher quality music you know from your bedroom and stuff so there's a larger quantity of music that's out of at a radio ready level mm-hmm. i would say is it overwhelming to you how much music is out there sometimes do you oh, find that difficult definitely it's definitely overwhelming because at the end of the day everybody knows the industry it's an oversaturated place with nearly any industry um it is overwhelming but at the same time it's really exciting um and that's what excites me even if i'm like my ears are sore i've listened to <laughs> 500 tracks today i'm like you know what i'll still listen to that one more because that could be an absolute gem and you know i want to give everybody as much equal opportunity as i can so um it's definitely overwhelming but it's a great space to be in rather than being like oh there's nothing to listen to i'm not excited so that's you know i think it's good a good thing because the i guess like with an introducing show especially it's like that it can be that make or break moment you know Mm -hmm. if if a song goes well there can it can it go on to some of the bigger shows is that kind of the path generally it'll take 100 percent. like if i take uh, the artist ushna for example um he kind of came out of nowhere and i loved his stuff i was like this is great i played him on my introducing show and then we put him forward for the introducing track of the week on radio one he got it smashed it and now he's playing big weekend so which is it's incredible and it's so like well deserved and that's just one example of what can happen and even if you look at Roe for example years ago I wasn't involved in radio then but you know the presenters really loved what she was doing she got a couple of players on radio one and then she went and played Glastonbury and I'm pretty sure she she was only like 18 or something that's crazy yeah it's mental but it just shows what can happen and there are opportunities there too so yeah, I think it's, it's it's a bit of a different <clears throat> mindset when you're kind of evaluating music in a way. Like we used to do track reviews on the podcast. We don't do them anymore because no one wants to listen to our opinions. <laughs> no, like I listen to the back as well. I'm like, God, I'm such a dickhead. Like, <laughs> but I also increasingly don't like reviews as a, as a format either. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's different because when I feel like when you listen to music generally, it's very 
casual almost or you do it you have it in the background whereas yeah when it's it is almost maybe not dramatic but someone's career in your hands so it's like they, they put everything into it you want to listen to it a couple of times and give it a fair chance it's yeah. like it's a different mindset that you have to get into yeah definitely and I I always find as well it's not just if I like it I have to remember well my listeners like this as well mm-hmm. you know so it's not just to appease me it's to make sure everyone's happy and that there's a good mix of genre and you know range there too you're um doing a lot of interviews for the sound of 2022 um have you got any picks that maybe weren't on that list of just your personal That's a great personal ones Ooh, that is a good question i'm not gonna lie i don't know who's on that list off the top <laughs> of my head i remember pink panther s1 can't remember who else. Oh. I'll bring I'll bring it up. Um, yeah. But like, sounded this. It's amazing how well that predicts uh, success. People like I think Fifty Cent was the first person to win BBC Sound of. Um, yeah. It was Pasalu won a recent one? Slow Tie won a recent. One. Did Slow Tie win? I don't think Slow Tie won. He was he was nominated though. Definitely they? nominated. I think Billie Eilish won one. Yeah. I think. yeah. Um. But yeah, it's a really good indicator of um of big acts because I, I think Billie Eilish and Stormzy judged one year as well on it um yeah well, so we what did we get a whole massive panel of um like contributors as a proper this proper special mm. title for it i can't remember what it is <laughs> um but then everybody's like listed on the website that helped send in their choices and stuff so. right, right i mean wet leg are second and they're having a bit of a moment like even yeah, my dad knows who they are yeah, yeah it's so crazy yeah. that album they i mean they're kind of the band at the moment yeah aren't they? yeah mm-hmm. they've got yeah a crazy amount of hype so yeah. I see like people that I follow on Twitter who have got like nothing to do with music in America or something and then they'll just tweet about wet leg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what's it's happened? It's great though because I find for me like, you know, there was a lot of hype around them before but they've fulfilled it. It's not just hype. There's, you know, I was going to say bark to the bite. I don't know if that's, yeah, is that yeah. saying? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I know that like, um, even when they only had like two singles out mm-hmm. and um, yeah, my mate in Manchester was trying to get tickets and it was just impossible they're selling out gigs based off yeah. one or two singles 100%. just looking at like 2011 so jesse j won in 2011 oh james blake God. was second that's that's pretty interesting like is jesse j doing anything anymore i don't know i don't know i'm not sure mm. i know that she won like the chinese version of x factor what no way what? yeah really? serious <laughs> yeah in like 2018 or 17 or something that's, that's wild mad. i know she did she did uh judging on the red chair thing the, the, the voice. voice yeah for a while but that was ages ago so yeah, the the twenty twelve one's pretty mad. Sorry, I'm just going down like a wormhole. <laughs> just like, get in research the in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's really interesting. It's Michael Kiewnicka one. Mm. Um and yeah, the long list included ASAP Rocky, Azelia Banks, Frank Ocean, uh Leanne Le Havis. Yeah, that's that's wow. pretty sick. Um here's some here's some of the favorite interviews or standout interviews that you've got to do. Um that's a that's a good question. Um, recently, I interviewed Jelani Blackman. He's sick. South He's got Southwest. the deepest voice ever. So this is so funny because the first interview I ever did on Radio One it was Jelani, mm-hmm. and I remember coming off the call and being like, "He has the world's deepest voice." I was like, "Is that real? Is it real?" <laughs> and then he was out at South by Southwest, and I was like to my producer, "I was like, we need to get him on the show just so I can oh. actually." see if his voice is yeah, real yeah. and it is it's yeah. a very deep voice and I was like that's definitely one of my like favorites because it kind of was that full circle moment for me and how like for me that was my first guest and how I progressed since yeah. and so that was really nice um I had a fun one with Tom Grannon uh last year it was over zoom and um, but it was all to do with the really wants to introduce some live lounge which is fun he was a judge mm-hmm. um last year it's just so much fun to chat to you yeah, know yeah. um so that was a that was a nice one too. It's probably ones that I'm missing. Um, there definitely is. Like it's one of those things you put me on the yeah. spot. So I'm like, have I ever interviewed anyone? I don't know. <laughs> you were you were out by South by Southwest though this year. How, mm-hmm. how did that go? That was incredible. Such a dream. Like honestly, the best week. But like really great people as mm. well. Get to see all the bands I support actually play live. I thought it was quite funny because the fact that obviously a lot of them are based in the UK or over here in Ireland. And I haven't seen them live. So I actually got to see them all live in Texas. And I was like, this is great. And I wish we could have more week-long kind yeah. of showcase events yeah. like that. Because so talented, honestly. And is it, like, I really hope I get to go next year. But is it just like a open plan sort of thing in the city that you're just walking around? And there's different shit going on all around the place? Kind of. Like, um, there's this street called 6th Street. Right. And um, you just get blasted with sound. That's what I can describe it. Like you're walking down the middle like this, and it's like 
do 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 here and blah, like you know um and it's mental when you first walk there you're like there's too many too many things going on you don't really know how to take it in um but it's great so you have like loads of different venues and they're all kind of close and if they're not you can get like a little electric scooter um <laughs> that's really fun um but we our main base was um in cedar street courtyard and it was like this incredible kind of setup we had a stage and like you know you could see the kind of brick on the wall there was like vines coming down and there's a bar this side and a bar that side and it's like the best venue and then there was a balcony too so you could like look down at the bands performing and yeah it was, it was good times i think um it sounds like it has a pretty unique atmosphere and stuff there like other voices has a very unique atmosphere mm-hmm. as well what do you make of it as a showcase in a festival yeah i love other voices um i think it's really special the fact that it's in dingle of all places you mm. know um yeah again it has a different type of buzz about it i feel like um other voices is really really special and um a lot of artists you see maybe they've started and even on the music trail too you get to see them there in those intimate venues and the crowds are always so so lovely Mm -hmm. i think i saw like a video online of sigrid which is in a bar playing a piano and everyone was just like having the best time and it's like that's New what phones, just vibes yeah that's yeah. what other voices is about isn't it <laughs> it you is yeah, yeah 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 i think i think it really breeds a different kind of atmosphere because you have to go through this like almost pilgrimage to get there where you have to like go through the mountains and then you just co- come out and it's just like it hits you like the coastline and it's like all in tiny pubs and stuff mm-hmm. um yeah what festivals are you going to this summer that's a good question so as far as i know we've got I'm not even going to do them in order because yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we've got Great Escape coming up. There's um, some stuff here in Dublin, I think, for it as well. Yeah, isn't it's there? like the road to Great Escape. So a couple of right. acts are playing before. Um, I'm pretty sure Priya Ragu is on that yes, too. Yes, she is. Love Priya Ragu so much. Um, incredible. Um, so there's that going there, going to Big Weekends. Where's that this year? It's in Coventry. Oh, class. going to be my first time in Coventry. So that'll be fun. Got AVA Festival. Yeah. Standal. Um, Reading as well. Mm-hmm. Are you um, going to Glastonbury? I do not know. Cannot. You know. I would like to go. Yeah. Though, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Figures are yeah. putting yeah. it out there. So hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully we'll see. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, are you playing any festivals this summer? <laughs> um, not at the moment. I know for me, artist wise, I've just kind of been focusing on writing a mm-hmm. lot and just kind of put my energy into that and you know if gigs come along great um yeah. I'll, I'll do them and enjoy them but i'm not putting any pressure on myself yeah. mm-hmm. um because i really want to kind of focus on the sound and focus on the band kind of atmosphere because i know like me solo is grand like you know you can practice for yourself that yeah. but i just want to get that right and then kind of focus on maybe doing more festival slots and stuff next year um mm-hmm. so yeah that's kind of the focus at the moment how do you balance all that? Because it's so that, like that's two careers on the go at once. Even and just I, social media on its own. Like how are you? How are you doing that? I mean, it's a lot. It yeah. definitely is. I have to make sure that I pop things in my calendar and don't uh, don't double book. That's a main thing. Um, but it's like just kind of dividing your days and what you can, and obviously trying to make sure that I have room for me as well like I need at least a day where I can just decompress and watch silly Disney movies if I want you know um but I'm enjoying the pace of it I like to keep myself busy and you know um yeah it's it's fun it's fun so I can't complain and I've been working with a lot of different writers and meeting new people recently and I've really loved that process um so yeah it's it's good but busy yeah yeah it is crazy <laughs> yeah. i was looking down your instagram today and i was like how do you do so much <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty next level no. you've even got that uh, whiplash thing in london as yeah, well yeah whiplash too which is so much fun really really loved kind of bringing whiplash to life because before we launched that we launched at the end of last year but basically been a year in the making of who we're gonna get and this is what's gonna be like on the night and like kind of confirming where we're gonna have it and stuff like that um so it's been really fun to kind of do that and you know when we get it we make sure we get really good acts that are kind of breaking and that you know i love obviously and that people are interested in seeing i think we had uh, we had ellie dixon headline the last one and she's massive on tiktok mm-hmm. um but i know for them it focuses to say like look you know she's a real person she actually plays live gigs as well she doesn't just exist online so i was happy to be able to give that platform yeah. and the night was such a success you know it really really was so love doing it 
Yeah, I saw that you had uh, April there as well. Um, I think that was the one before. Yeah, um, yeah. Is there like a different kind of satisfaction almost when you give opportunities to people from Ireland and Northern Ireland? Oh, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I love yeah. it. Of course <laughs> I love it. It's where I'm from and I'm like, go on, you know? Yeah. Um, so if I can give that opportunity from people from here, like, of course, like I, I will, you know, as much as I can. But not being biased, obviously. So obviously obviously yeah yeah um but uh yeah no it's great because like i say we're so talented here and i think like we definitely deserve a platform mm. and sometimes i feel like we're not always taken on people are just like all oh, right okay okay but really like you know we we really are doing some great things so. yeah definitely punch above our weight in terms of like numbers of people here like and then numbers yeah. of people coming out doing doing, doing good stuff and mm -hmm. um, i guess in an ideal world where would you be with all these things in five years like we're like radio stuff music stuff like we're ideal world yeah yeah oh i mean that's a massive question i probably would have taken over the whole radio one station <laughs> <laughs> um, 24 no, hour live stream yeah, yeah basically um no i mean i think oh that's a big question i don't know if i ever look that far into the future um but i know for me i definitely would be like be liking liking mm -hmm. I can't speak mm -hmm. I would definitely like to be in a position where I maybe doing a couple more radio shows or have a show that spans over a few days definitely um, and then kind of music wise I mean word domination is yeah. the overall <laughs> goal um, but I would like to be kind of gigging regularly you know have that kind of set up I'll have maybe maybe an album under my belt as well mm -hmm. um i would love to get something like that into the world even if the world is not asking for it it's gonna happen <laughs> yeah. at some point um but yeah kind of as a loose term like I say that's a scary question <laughs> yeah, it was, more, it, was yeah. More, it was more just to try and get an insight into your motivation it's not necessarily where do you want to be but like i guess mm -hmm. in five years if you're like saying i still want to be doing radio because blah 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 like mm -hmm. i guess like what is the most satisfying Thing for you about being in music in in general is it the community for, for me it feel it's the, the community like um yeah the, what sort of things are kind of motivating you still yeah i mean definitely community is a big one um because i love that we have a network and you know even as a solo artist sometimes i would say that can be a bit lonely but when you do have a community like i always even like shout out the x collective they're mm -hmm. great because it's like bringing all these musicians and creatives together and you know you have that kind of support system people you can chat to so say if you're like oh what do you think this artwork somebody can be real and be like well, it's not very good <laughs> or that's great you know you yeah, should definitely yeah. roll with that and i think that's really important and that camaraderie that you have i love something i love is going to gigs you could go into a gig by yourself and just still know people there yeah yeah and you have your gig friends also that you maybe only see at gigs and then you have you know your other friends yeah, that yeah, you can yeah. see which i i really like that um so that's definitely important to me. Um, and even like, it's the it's kind of the connection, which is the main thing, yeah. I think. And also like, I just love how music in general, you can either, you know, if you're in a bad mood, you can listen to something and I'll sort you right out. Same if you're in a happy mood and you just wanna listen to like something that's like, the, the main word is like, let's dance or something yeah, like, you yeah. know, and you're like, oh, great. So I, I really love that aspect of it as well. So, yeah. yeah. Who've, um who have you been listening to recently, even like aside from what you've been playing on your own show? Yeah, oh, uh, good question. I actually find, which is really funny, is that I go through the phases of like, I, w I don't even listen to like huge artists anymore. I just listen to like a lot of introducing artists or people that are coming through. Obviously, I know we mentioned Wet Leg earlier. I've been listening a lot to them because yeah. the album is just it's fantastic. I, I love it. Uh, Priya Ragu as well. I've been listening to a lot of her, a lot of Thundercat. Um, I'm working my way up to see them actually because they're down in Dublin they're supporting Red Hot Chili Peppers oh yeah there's some oh yeah I think um, is Anderson, Anderson Pack there yeah. as well that yeah. is <clears throat> That's gnarly as fuck. That's crazy. I know. So I, know. So I was so buzzing about it because when I heard, I was like, uh, my friends were like, Red Hot Chili Peppers are, you know, playing. I was like, all right, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. And I saw them years ago when I was younger. So I was like, that's like, that's kind of dumb. But then I saw the sport acts. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, I'm there. Yeah. And I've seen Anderson Pack before, but I haven't seen Thundercat. And that's definitely one that's on He's my great. list yeah. to go and see. So I seen I'm excited. Anderson Pack at Glass maybe a few years ago when he like, was on the drums at the start and he did a medley of like loads of Dr. Dre songs and he started on the drums and then by the end of the song he was at the front of the stage and someone else had moved on to the drums after yeah. it was he's, yeah he's I have like Anderson Pack's my uh, he's my like 
best like I saw them before they were big. Story. I couldn't even go without yeah, yeah. my raging. When we were still living in Manchester, <laughs> and me and our friend Lauren, we went to see him at uh, the, the, Ru- the, the Ruby Lounge. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Right, you're right. Mm. Which is like a, <clears throat> I want to say like less than 100 people venue. Oh like maybe even like, maybe even like 50 or 60 or something like that. And it was just, it was before Malibu came out. And it was after the first album. And it was, yeah, just like him. He was like, like as far away as you are now for yeah. me. And just like playing the drums the whole gig. And like I'd never even listened to him before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my friend was just like, yeah, let's just go see this gig. I was like, yeah, sure. And then I came out the end and I was like, oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then like last year or a couple of years ago, me and the same friend, we saw him at Alexandra Palace in London, which is like 20,000 people or something. Oh, it's just like... Yeah. That, is, that is crazy. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's an immaculate glue up. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love when you go to a gig and you leave and you're like, that was great. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just love feeling inspired by artists and definitely one because I actually saw Anderson Pack on the Bruno Mars tour. Oh, yeah. yeah and that, that was obviously before they had their whole collaboration yeah. and, oh, yeah. and all that so when that happened i was like i don't know see this happening yeah. because yeah 100 percent but it was, it was brilliant it was so so good yeah i yeah. think they're gonna have to do another album so yeah. exciting. They have to, it, it's, yeah. it's too much of a perfect match isn't it yeah for sure <laughs> yeah have you got um have you got any of the other any any of those other kind of people that you saw like at the perfect time just before they they blew up let me see. Well, actually, one, um, somebody we had at Whiplash uh, was an artist called Kat Burns. Don't know if you've heard of her, mm-hmm. but um, singer songwriter. Um, she'd been doing like bits on TikTok. Um, it was getting like popular enough, but like nothing yeah. major. And then mm-hmm. we had her play just before Christmas. Over Christmas, she went viral. She's in the charts now. It's crazy. So she's selling out like two nights, like in the Omira in London now um and before obviously she played with us but just much smaller kind of venue and i'm like i'm so glad i'm so glad i saw you before this but um it, it just it's just great to me to see that i'm trying to think of somebody else that i've probably seen um in a kind of more intimate setting it's cool kind of being i was talking to someone about this yesterday like being part of someone's journey from the start and then mm. you're like rooting for them every time they do something yeah. you know what i mean i love that oh i've just thought of one a good one soak Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So I remember obviously hearing of Soak when they first kind of blew up and it was Derry City of Culture and I remember we both played Glasgow Berry um and it was it was my first ever festival. I was petrified <laughs> and Soak was playing after me. Um and then I remember seeing them play there and being like, Wow, so cool. And then fast forward to this was it maybe this year yeah kind of started this year they were doing their independent venues tour and again it was still very like small yeah. i was like wow it's just incredible yeah, to see yeah. how somebody grows as an artist and i was like i can't believe that we shared a stage together before you know and yeah. I, th- I think recently enough i'd seen them play at the waterfront also so it's just it's just really nice to watch yeah. that journey it yeah fun. it's kind of like it's like being proud of your own children or something. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had that with like when Curtis supporting Kian Kavanaugh in London yeah, recently. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wow, go on, man. That, uh, <laughs> the same with like Denise Child supporting um, Ed Sheeran. Oh Ed Sheeran. my gosh. I yeah. know. Crazy. I saw that. I was like, wow. She's incredible. Yes. That's, incredible. That's like, is, I seen that. I was looking at the tour. I was like, wow, that's mad. But then you look and it's like back to back dates in Crook Park, back to back dates in Boucher Road Playing mm-hmm. Fields. Like, it's literally hundreds of thousands of people mm-hmm. are going to see her in the space of a week. Yeah, is it still going to be like God knows and like Merlin and everyone? I think they well. Uh, they said they're going down. I was talking to him the other day, and he said they're going to be there. So I'm assuming so. That's that's a big dub, big yeah. dub for the culture. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like immensely proud. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's basically the best support slot you could possibly get. 100%. No, it definitely is. Um, I just I just think it's an incredible achievement, and like fair play to them, you know, because what she's doing is just. It's groundbreaking. I honestly think, like, when when she broke through, you know, I think everybody was like, oh, my God. Yeah. This is what we needed. Yeah. Like, that's what we needed at the time, and I'm just really, really happy. Yeah. So it was great. Yeah, she's she's great. Um, excited to see what, what she's got coming up next. Um, yeah, I think I think we're kind of... We've got a lot, got a lot, of, got a lot in there, don't we? I don't really... I'm kind of... I feel very... I'm, feeling, I'm just feeling very fulfilled, you know uh. what I mean? I'm like... Oh, okay. Um, I think we are running out of camera space. Oh, I've well, just been told. Yeah. This, the DIY podcast is the worst. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. Is there is there anything you want to plug bef- 
before we end it uh, so i've got a gig coming up on the 28th of april in the oh yeah center i think it's that yo magazine one so i'm really oh. excited to kind of get back on stage again and just uh just have fun mm. um and then obviously radio shows listen to atl monday nights from 9 30 p.m and then radio one sundays at 11 yeah. I feel so weird plugging my radio <laughs> shows. I'm like, so gross. But please listen. <laughs> and visit Gemma Bradley's Instagram. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Get me there too. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was great having you. Um, when you. I had you on for a bit, so it was, it was good to finally make it happen. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I guess we can, we can call it a that. Like no memories be assessed, so not much we can do about that. But um, <laughs> yeah. it, it was great having you on. Thanks yeah. very much for coming down. No, thanks for having me. It's been really fun chatting, and like I say, I love the setup in here. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> love the vibes. So. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Peace.